What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here and today Apple launched a slew of new products, hardware, software and sort of in between at their what's become an annual iPod event. Let me go ahead and recap what to expect. So if you see me look down or fiddle with some notes, the keynote and conference just ended. Actually, Chris Martin from Coldplay is still singing as I'm recording this, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. And I'll start at the beginning where Steve Jobs began his keynote. So first, gave some iOS updates. 120 million iOS devices have been sold, which is pretty impressive, and 200 apps are being downloaded every second. So like, boom, 200 apps, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, gave some updates on new stores in Shanghai and Paris. Uh, and then he announced iOS 4.1, which is going to be out next week for iPhone and iPod Touches with a ton of sort of new features, uh, including bug fixes, Bluetooth fixes, which I definitely experienced. Uh, Bluetooth wasn't always pairing with devices and it'll lose the pairing. Uh, proximity sensor fixes. And something new in the camera called HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range Photos. Essentially what that does is when you snap a picture with your iPhone, it takes three pictures, one normal one, one underexposed, one overexposed, and it's gonna combine them all into one image, which is gonna create a much richer picture. And if you don't want that HDR image, it's also going to store, uh, if you'd like it to, the regular image as well, so you can see the difference and sort of pick the one that's best for you, uh, which is kind of cool. It's gonna be built into iOS 4.1. You're also gonna be able to upload HD videos to YouTube uh, when connected to Wi-Fi, which has been one of the big complaints of iOS 4.0, so that's pretty cool. And also Game Center, which was demoed first when we saw a beta of iOS 4, is now going to be live, which is going to play games with other people, any, or really most, uh, iOS games. you be able to play with other people, see leaderboards, invite friends, accept invitations, sort of get your whole gaming experience uh, online, which is pretty neat. All right, so then he gave a sneak, it's actually going to be out by the way, um, next week like I mentioned, and there was a sneak preview of a new game coming out to iOS 4 uh, called Project Sword from Epic Games, it looked really impressive, beautiful graphics, and that's going to be out this holiday season. Then he also gave a sneak preview now of iOS 4.2, uh, which is going to be coming out later this year, probably in the November time frame, and that one was mostly about the iPad. Uh, the iPad is not running iOS 4, we don't have multitasking or folders or any of that other stuff. Uh, but the first time you've really seen it up and running uh, on an iPad. So there are some sort of cool new features you can expect with iOS uh, 4.2. This will also be true uh, with the, or some of it will be true at least, with the iPhone 4 and the iPod Touch. So first, wireless printing, uh, which is fantastic. So if you're in the Pages app, for example, on the uh, iPad, you'll be able to print right to your printer if you're connected uh, over a network. He didn't mention that the wireless printing was going to work on devices other than the iPad. Uh, but I assume that if the Pages application gets ported to other iOS devices, uh, it most certainly will work. Uh, AirPlay, which is going to let you stream audio and video uh, over Wi-Fi in the background. So you can listen to music in the background like Pandora and stuff. We've seen this on other iOS devices. Kind of neat. Uh, everything in sort of iOS 4 that you've come to know and love or loathe. Uh, multitasking, folders, uh, and the rest of it. And it's going again going to be out in November uh, for iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch. So now it's time to talk about the new products. Uh, every iPod, with the exception of the iPod Classic, got an update. The Classic was not discontinued, just not updated. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about some of the iPod updates that Steve began with. So we talked about the iPods first, new for every model year, and he began with the iPod Shuffle. Uh, and talked about the evolution of the shuffle, how it went from sort of a stick of gum looking thing to a thing with a clip, and then something that looks like now, like another piece of gum, like Trident. Uh, without any buttons, and the new generation iPod Shuffle will serve a hybrid of the last and current generation. Uh, so it's got a clip like the second generation, and it's got the voice over like the third. Uh, pretty impressive, very, very, very small. Uh, 15 hours of battery life from when you're playing music. Gonna come in five colors and be available for uh, $49. And all these new iPods I'm gonna mention uh, are going to be shipping next week and be available for pre-order today, which is September 1st. Kind of cool iPod Shuffle. Next, let's talk about the Nano, and he sort of gave the evolution of the Nano as well. He said the only way to really make it a little bit better and make the screen a little bit bigger was to get rid of the track wheel. So ladies and gentlemen, the track wheel is dead. Uh, the iPod Nano, is, or click wheel, is now going to be completely multi-touch screen, and it's got a clip, and the thing is small compared to the outgoing 
iPod Nano. It is 46% smaller, 42% thinner. Uh, it's got, again, a multi-touch screen running a version of iOS. It's got the FM radio, Nike Plus, and the voiceover bound in the iPod Shuffle. It's going to have a whopping 24 hours of battery life. And sort of kind of cool, holding down the home button, or holding down the screen is going to act as a home button, which may be sort of a sign of things to come in next generation uh, products. It's going to come in six colors. It's going to run 149 bucks for 8 gigs or 179 for 16 gigs. And the thing just looks really cool and it's so small, you can actually clip it to your wrist on a wristband and almost use it as a sort of a cool Dick Tracy type watch. So that is the new iPod Nano. Let's talk next about the best selling iPod and probably everybody's favorite, the iPod Touch, which was definitely due for an update. Uh, interestingly enough, the iPod Touch has now become the number one portable gaming system in the world. Uh, so outselling the Nintendo DS line and the Sony PSP line, kind of interesting. So the new one is obviously thinner. It's going to have the iPhone 4's Retina display, so you can get four times the pixel density and a really high resolution screen. Uh, the same A4 chip found in the iPhone and the iPads, so things going to be very, very, very fast. It's got the three axis gyroscope as well, so instead of moving the device the just left and right, you'll be able to go forward and back, which is going to be pretty cool uh, for gaming. It now has a front facing camera for FaceTime, uh, which is pretty neat. You'll be able to FaceTime uh, over Wi-Fi, of course, and be able to FaceTime with other uh, iPod Touch users and also with iPhones. Uh, so if you know someone with an iPhone, you go ahead and get your FaceTime on. Zoom Blitz is going to work uh, with email, so kind of neat. So instead of the FaceTime on the iPhone 4, worked with a phone number, this one will be associated to uh, an email address. It also has a rear camera uh, for recording HD video. We didn't talk about the resolution or what it could record, just HD video, presumably uh, 720p, which will be pretty impressive. We don't know about megapixelage or anything like that quite yet. Uh, though by the time you watch this, maybe up on the Apple website with the full specs. It's going to cost you, for an 8 gigabyte model, $229. For a 32 gigabyte model, no 16, it's going to cost you $299. And for a 64 gigabyte model, it's going to set you back $399. So those are the price points. Again, all new iPods are shipping next week, and pre-orders are starting today, which is September 1st. So now let's talk about some software iTunes 10 is launching, uh, and Steve talked about how relatively soon iTunes is going to be out selling physical media, uh, presumably CDs, uh, and the iTunes logo has a big old CD behind it. So with iTunes 10, we're getting a new iTunes logo uh, without the CD behind it. Love it or hate it, it's just a new logo. Uh, so iTunes 10 is going to bring a decent amount of new features. Uh, you're going to get a new hybrid view. When you have a lot of music that's in the same album, and you look in list view, it just lists the album pretty much all the way down. When you have five songs or more that are in part of the same album, you're now going to see the album artwork uh, instead of just listing the album name all the way down. Not going to take up any extra space, uh, but just sort of a nice new uh, visual cue. Kind of neat. So Apple is now in the social media business with a new service called Ping. It is essentially, according to Apple, uh, a social network for music. Uh, it's going to be built right into iTunes 10. It's a social music for discovery. You can follow and be followed. Uh, you can see what all your artists are doing music-wise. You have your own profile and that kind of thing. Very similar to uh, Facebook. Now, MySpace had been a real big push and a real big force in the music industry. But this is just another real kick in the nads uh, for MySpace. Looks like Apple is sort of entering the social media business, uh, which really not many people saw coming. Uh, but this is going to be the new ping service. You have the ability to sort of create a circle of friends so you can set how many people are going to see what music you're downloading or concerts you went to or what iTunes songs, whatever uh, music related stuff you want people to see. And presumably it's not going to be just music related. Apple can say it's just for music, but you can post whatever you want to post. Uh, kind of uh, interesting. Uh, very easy privacy filters. So sort of a dig, I guess, at Facebook. Um, very, very, very easy to use and easy to access privacy features. And Apple really went on the record as saying, this is not Facebook, this is not Twitter, this is meant just for music, but we'll see sort of what ping uh, evolves into. And it's going to be available today as part of iTunes 10. Uh, be available to 160 million users in 23 countries, and presumably the rest of the countries that have iTunes will be getting it uh, in the near future as well. It's also going to work on iPhone or iPod Touches. Kind of neat. 
Uh, and then Steve said there was one more thing. And the one more thing, unsurprisingly, was a new Apple TV, which is not renamed iTV. It's still going to be called Apple TV. And this is sort of the update I think a lot of people have been waiting for. It's sort of going to get Apple TV and sort of internet TV as a whole uh, mainstream and into most people's houses. So first off, it's a quarter of the size. Uh, it looks very, very, very small. You see some pictures of it as I talk. Uh, it's got a power supply built right into it, so no need for a brick. Uh, it's got HDMI port, Wi-Fi 802.11n, Ethernet port if you want it, and it's got that new aluminum remote uh, that's going to come with it. Uh, it's going to be all HD. He didn't say whether it's 1080 or 720. Presumably, it's just going to be 720. Uh, it's all rental based, so there's no purchases, which also going to mean there's no onboard store. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, everything is going to be uh, streaming, so either streaming from Apple servers, uh, you can stream from your computer if you want as well. And since there's no storage, you're not going to be syncing anything over, just grabbing content off your computer. So your desktop computer is going to have to be on, or a laptop, I suppose, to be able to stream content right to uh, the Apple TV. Uh, pretty neat. $4.99 for first run Hollywood movies, so the day they're out on DVD, it'll be out to rent on Apple TV for just under five bucks. And again, the same day. Uh, also now uh, TV show rentals, and only two networks are on board right now, ABC and Fox, and shows are going to be 99 cents. Presumably, uh, it'll be the day that they show on television or the next day. Uh, also kind of neat, we now have Netflix streaming uh, on the Apple TV. And a lot of people are gonna be asking, why would Apple put Netflix on the Apple TV when you're not gonna maybe buy a movie that you'd rent or rent a movie that you'd get from iTunes and now just watch it on Netflix. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, we also have a YouTube viewer, a new YouTube uh, player, and a new uh, UI. So let's go ahead and talk about Netflix for just a minute, but before we do, let's talk about price. This is going to be $99, and that's why I want to talk about Netflix. Uh, look at some players that play Netflix, like the Roku Box, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii. Uh, they certainly, those things do others, but a lot of people are buying them primarily for Netflix if you weren't playing games, uh, the Roku in, uh, specifically. Uh, now you can just pick up an Apple TV, and people, I assume Apple's figuring as long as people have it, maybe they're going to rent a movie or watch a TV show. Maybe they wouldn't have rented before. Uh, so Netflix just ordered the first taste of the drugs, I guess, to get you in the door, and hoping that Apple TV is going to keep you hooked and let you keep renting movies. Uh, so $99, it's down from, I believe, $229 from the previous generation Apple TV. Uh, it'll be available within the next four weeks uh, later this month. And also kind of cool, that new AirPlay that we talked about lets you stream content from your iOS devices to your Apple TV. So you can rent a movie on your iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch, or a TV show, watch the first 20 minutes of it, walk downstairs, hit a button, and play it directly on your Apple TV right where you left off. Oh, which is kind of neat. Sometimes I download a whole season of TV shows when I fly or travel, and I'm sort of stuck watching that content uh, on my iPhone or iPad or computer or wherever. I can now just very easily stream that right to the television, uh, which is pretty neat and uh, kind of cool. So what do you guys think about all this announcement? Are you excited, not excited? Do you want to see anything, not seeing anything? Uh, of course, we'll have full hands-on of these products uh, on Techno Buffalo and the YouTube channel. But I want to know what your thoughts are on the Apple event. I know Apple is a very polarizing company. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. Anyway, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.